practices um, and also discuss on, um, you know, how basically designers uh, should prepare uh, for these, uh, for the future. Um, and before we begin um, and like get into the, the, the real fun stuff, uh, I just want to like quickly go over some key terms that I'll be using today just to kind of make sure that everyone is, is aware of these technologies. Um, first up is virtual reality, uh, quite a popular terminology. Um, so VR experiences uh, kind of immerse users into a completely digital um, environment, um, offering a step away from the physical world. So it's like stepping into uh, another world where you can explore, train, um, or even travel, uh, you know, all from your um, living room. Um, and coming on to the next technology is uh, augment reality or AR. Um, so you can think about uh, Pokemon Go, which became like very viral. So AR basically overlays any digital content uh, onto the real uh, real world, so making it more interactive uh, and and exciting without replacing uh, you know what's what's around you. And the next technology is mixed reality, uh, which became very popular with the recent launch of Apple Vision Pro. It's a fine example. Uh, so imagine blending uh, the real uh, and digital world so seamlessly that you can play with with virtual objects as if you're you know right in front of them. So uh, this this is also uh, something that you do with headsets. So uh, you're not like completely immersed into a new new world, but you're present in your current world, and there are digital objects around you that you can operate on. Um, and the fourth one, which uh, primarily uh, we might not be, a lot of people might not be aware of, is basically digital twins. And we use it, we use this concept predominantly on uh, proptic experiences. Um, so a digital twin is basically, like as the name goes, it's basically a clone of a physical object. So uh, by connecting, uh, you know, real-time data from physical world to its digital counterpart, um, using IoT sensors, uh, you know, you can you can basically uh, get a you know living, breathing virtual model, and this is predominantly used in in, in most of the proptic experiences uh, as well. So as as we go go through the slides, we'll I'll I'll, I'll probably uh, touch base on this. Um, so yeah, um, coming to the topic. Uh, so these four technologies that I mentioned, like VR, um, AR, MR, and digital twins, uh, or what we Use to create, you know, prop tech experiences within PropVR. Um, Square Yards and PropVR. PropVR is basically a part of uh, Square Yards as a as, as a large company, and um, so usually VR and AR uh, experiences are known for training um, simulations, um, and also you might have come across some of you know the 360 interior tools that um, VR headsets can offer. Uh, but today, um, I'm going to show you how they are revol revolutionizing the, you know, the entire uh, real estate end-to-end -end life cycle. So, um, and just a bit about us, the company. So, Square Yard is primarily, uh, we are into real estate. We're into property search, enlisting, brokerage, mortgages, interior design, and more. But um, our tech team is PropVR, which is where all the magic happens. So we kind of blend design, 3D, um, tech, research uh, into creating immersive experiences. And uh, we have uh, around 18 plus international patents in this area, and uh, out of which six is granted. And we also have like partnerships with uh, big names like uh, you know CCM Maps, Unreal, Microsoft, etc. So moving on to uh, the real estate life cycle that I was talking about. So uh, we cover uh, the entire end-to-end -end, uh, real estate life cycle with our immersive digital solutions. So uh, this is like from concept design and simulation to marketing, sales, um, immersive search and discovery, um, uh, construction updates, and even community engagement. So we we have digital twin applications for after sales services as well, like building and community management, surveillance, maintenance, etc. Um, so let's kind of zoom into some of the main use cases. Um, starting with simulation and master planning, this is a very exciting use case. Like digital twin kind of lets us uh, you know place properties within 3D GIS maps. 
um, and kind of run uh, what if scenarios and simulate you know any demographic changes so imagine um, you have architectural designs that you want to kind of test um, and find out which one is the best like based on uh, quality of light like for example how many use units get best in light what is the air circulation like um, and even financial yield, like for example, number of units that you can build in a particular given area. Um, so how will a single tower model look like and how, how will a double tower model look like? So you can kind of run in different simulation even before you kind of construct um, or get into construction or planning for the property. And I think generative AI that we have today kind of drives it up a notch because uh, with generative AI, it kind of helps you generate multiple uh, architectural designs in very quick time. So this is one solution that we have is like for uh, very early early stage products where they're still like looking at what needs to be constructed and you know how can they take better uh, decision in terms of uh, what is the architectural design that they want to kind of move ahead with. Um, so the next stage comes into uh, you know post they decide the construction and they've planned for what what is the design uh, and the architecture um this is this is one of the classic use cases uh, of digital twins um so bim or uh, building information modeling uh, is basically uh, a comprehensive 3d model of any property that you're constructing right like it enables architects engineers uh, construction professionals to collaborate and manage uh, information effectively uh, throughout the complete uh, project life cycle so what becomes exciting by making BIMs go digital is that uh, by combining BIMs with digital twins um, and creating a, you know, a central project management platform, um, this basically lets stakeholders visualize and analyze every aspect of the product. So we have sensors installed within, uh, within the construction uh, site, which is happening. So which, and also we have update systems uh, that where manually uh, construction professionals basically update. So this will help us understand, uh, like have a central system which allows us to understand what is the progress of the project, where is the project getting delayed, um, how is the, for example, how is the water pipeline like, how is the electric lines going? So you know, kind of tracking complete end-to-end, -end, uh, you know, construction updates and also manage uh, timelines effectively. Um, this 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 use case is also widely used uh, among uh, you know uh, some of the big prop tech developers and co uh, construction companies. Um, another interesting use case that we work on is search and discovery. Um, so this is basically a B two C use case um, that we are into. So currently, platforms that we have any any property listing platforms that we have are pretty basic. Like in the sense, you have you have two D searches, you have um, you have Google Maps. You Google map based search um, and you look for properties uh, for rent, new construction properties, uh, look into my images and like contact agent like and, and move into it, right? But uh, what we believe is and when what we've been researching and working on um, is that with, with extremely fast internet like 5G connectivity, generative AI that's coming in, uh, VR based solutions, digital twins, um, and also uh, uh, higher capability hardware, um, a more immersive search and, ex search and discovery experience becomes a possibility. So, um, so imagine, uh, you know, uh, searching for and discovering uh, new or off-plan off projects which are still not built, right, um, online without having to rely on just images. So instead, you can actually view uh, the projects uh, on an interactive map, explore, go through the streets, explore the surroundings, uh, and like really immerse yourself into the property, understand the view of the property, um, go go into each of the interiors, um, amenities, like view through it, and basically take a better decision. So this property that you're seeing here on the video is not even constructed. Um, so this is all built on 3D, uh, and the application lets users just go through the property without even that being actually present today. So, um, and these kind of work very well for luxury properties because like if you're investing millions of dollars in buying the, these properties, it, it's important to give the users the experience where they can actually experience, you know, and, and go through the property and understand what they're actually getting into, right? Um, and we are also, this is, this is basically how we are transforming our um, India search and discovery platform. 
um, into giving a more immersive experience. Um, so the property uh, pages uh, is kind of updated and you have like 3D models um, as well. And this property that you're seeing today is not even built and it's all 3D that's embedded on, on, a, on a map. Um, and the next use case uh, is primarily how do we reach uh, foreign invest foreign investors and like larger audience, right? Like the whole purpose of having a virtual experience is basically boosting sales. And what we've seen in the past, like working with 100 plus developers across the world is like we've seen, um, you know, 300 percent increase in sales uh, with with these virtual platforms because it helps them get like more foreign investors to invest in um, because this experience helps them uh, not just go into the property and view, but also we we have like a remote showcase tool that kind of helps them uh, join in and and because these 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 3d experiences require uh, higher end pcs and uh higher end software so we what we've worked on and what our tech worked on is basically how can we have this online um how can we optimize to have this online and how can we have a very seamless uh you know property showcase experience um so these this particular um uh, tool that we have works across multiple devices, tablet, phone, desktop, VR headset. So it's not necessary that a buyer needs to own a VR headset if he's like remotely looking at the property. Um, so the that's that's something that's very important is that not everyone owns a VR headset and it's important for everyone to have like, uh, you know, uh, the, the immersive experience in whatever uh, devices that, that they have. Um, another uh, interesting um, experiment or very latest experiment that we're working on is, uh, you know, we're connecting generative AI to 3D avatars. Um, so you'd have come across multiple, uh, oops, sorry, it's not loading, I guess. Yeah, so, um, so, so yeah, connecting generative AI to 3D avatars um, and creating like virtual sales agents. Um, so imagine walking through a property in Metaverse, interacting with virtual agents who can answer questions um, help you take you through the property and, uh, you know, uh, like hel help you be basically a better, uh, better buying decision. Um, so, uh, this is a use case that we have, uh, for after sales. So once you sell the property, um, you still have the 3d asset, uh, in place, right. And these 3d assets are often expensive. So how can we effectively use these assets for sale? So how can, uh, how do you like use this throughout the life cycle of the property. So with BIM uh, model integrated, uh, we now have detailed information about, you know, construction elements like water lines, electrical system, um, and, and also by adding various sensors to the buildings and integrating them with our digital system, uh, we can create a very advanced surveillance and maintenance solution. So uh, this allows, you know, for real time monitoring um, and kind of efficient management and also ensures that the building operates uh, like very smoothly. Um, and the last use case that I want to cover is uh, gaming meets real estate, kind of reaching the Gen Z and Gen Alpha. So uh, this, this is primarily an experiment that we're running to boost engagement with younger, uh, younger audience. So imagine Fortnite players navigating through your property. Uh, so, you know, so we integrated the Dubai downtown digital twin map with Fortnite game. Um, and this kind of helps us, you know, engage with the next gen uh, and getting them into like, you know, most in, more in more immersive spaces. So uh, like Fortnite has around 3.2 billion hours played and almost 12.3 million concurrent users and 58% of these players are under 34. So it's a great for a great way for you to market and reach the, the, the newer generation uh, um, audience as well. Um, and uh, so these are some of the use cases that we are working on like end to end. Um, and, and it's these, these are all available as separate products um, that we work with B2C and B2B markets. Um, and, um, yeah, so emerging industries, we we also have, uh, this is just for property that I just showed you for, is this for prop, prop tech, but we also have other uh, extended use case, I would say, where uh, this is a very interesting use case where, you know, a digital uh, 
digital twin of a city can help you create a better visualization system. So for energy management, water management, emission management, where you can kind of view uh, these data, integrate these data with the system and actually view it at a at, at a city level or a sector level or even dissect at a particular area level or even building level. Um, and uh, this, this becomes a great visualization tools for like government bodies. Um, to kind of, uh, you know, uh, provide an easy, easy, easy management. Um, and you would have come across uh, shopping experiences, retail experiences, where uh, virtual shopping experience is a thing, especially after um, Apple Vision Pro was launched, uh, a lot of brands moved into virtual shopping experiences, um, like Alu, Nike, uh, so many brands moved into it. So this is also a very exciting space to be. Um, and apart from this, we also have some unique use cases like um, like creating a digital twin of an airport for you know uh, maintenance, security, surveillance, and and you know management um, like for port. So I I could talk about multiple such use cases that we have like really dive deep into research and we've like developed. So uh, but yeah, I mean moving on to uh, the most important thing is mastering the art of design uh, for these immersive experiences, right? So all the products that you saw now is part of our portfolio. And we've been doing like very deep research, pro product research, uh, tech research uh, to kind of build these build these tech and, 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 and build these platforms uh, that can be used by end customers. Um, and uh, the change is definitely happening. Um, uh, I, I don't know how many of you are aware of such products that are available in the market. But what I'm very excited about is like the future where these experiences will come into, um, you know, the hands of every single consumer as 3D headsets, uh, MR headsets evolve and start to be a part of our lives. So uh, we strongly believe that this is going to be the future and it's important for designers and research teams to kind of catch up with the trends. And, um, and, and there's a lot of opportunity in this space as well uh, because it's still, still very early and still very new. Um, some of the key principles uh, I would say is like, one thing that we need to remember as designers is, is that uh, when we are designing experiences for end users, see people are not seeking seeking out experiences that people are seeking out experiences and not technologies right so you cannot like push in a uh, vr or or an ar experience uh, just for the sake of it so user centric approach is the base and it's 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 very important um so and it kind of still remains the same so uh, like focus on the objective and the desired outcomes and don't chase the trends but if you feel that something can fit into uh, fit into this some if, if an experience can be enhanced with a virtual reality experience or an augmented reality experience or a mixed reality experience that's something that you need to like explore and and and, and definitely uh, look into it and, and and research um and also it's very important as designer designers to understand some of the key concepts um like field of view um gestures because um it's 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 three D now. So there are multiple other gestures that get added, like pinching, swiping, tapping, um, and also other sensors that get added as well to enhance the experience, like sight, sound, touch. So how do we kind of um, uh, combine all of this and ensure that we we, we give a, give a wholesome experience to end users? So it's very important for designers to understand these concepts in depth. Uh, third most important concept is safety and comfort. Uh, so, because we are wearing headsets, we can we must in ourselves into a different uh, virtual world. It is important uh, to make the users feel comfortable and secure, right? Like ensure that you uh, like inform users of any hurdles that are there in the real world that they might kind of get in uh, get into, or um, uh, don't make the three D experience very dizzy. Um, so, so ensure that you test uh, these experiences by different, you know, positions where users can be in different, uh, uh, different scenarios where users can be like, you know, where, where they'll be basically using these experiences. So it's important to test them um, with, with all different use cases and all different possibilities uh, to ensure safety and comfort. And um, interoperability is a key. Uh, one thing that we realized working on so many products is that, um, 
the adoption of vr headsets is very st is still very low it might it, it it might definitely increase in the future as the headsets become small affordable and kind of accessible to everyone uh, but right now it's it's still it's still very new and the adoption is very low so whenever you create such immersive experiences it is important that the experience that you create right now scales to different uh, uh, different devices, right? So the experience that I showed you now scales to mobile, desktop, VR headsets. Um, so it needs to be it needs to be interoperable. It needs to scale to different devices as well, so that you kind of future proof your product. And um, testing and iterating definitely. But the challenge with testing and iterating, especially for designers, is that we don't have uh, a lot of tools which allows designers to create experiences and test it right away on on a VR headsets. So uh, it is important to kind of work hand in hand with a tech team, and also it is important to work with three D development team. So the future uh, immersive experience team will have three D developers as a very integral part of it because all the objects that you see in this virtual world is three D. So it, it's very important uh, to kind of understand the concepts of 3D and like work with uh, 3D teams uh, uh, to, to, to test any product or and, and iterate on your solutions. Um, and accessibility is important. Uh, like it, you need to ensure that these experiences are accessible to everyone uh, with different types of uh, sensory processing, uh, physical abilities. So uh, consider having uh, uh, consider having these options incorporated as, as and when you design the experiences as well. Um, coming to the future design teams, uh, I think the an ideal designer today is, is, is someone who understands product, who has design thinking, who, has, who is uh, who's very strong in research, who can kind of put, put in everything together, um, is considered an all-rounder designer, all-rounder product designer. But what would happen in the future as these kind of experiences come in, um, he also needs to understand uh, the concepts of uh, you know, 3D. So he, need, he needs to master spatial concepts, understand 3D assets, how these integrate into user experiences. Um, so this comprehensive uh, skill set ensures you know, optimal end user experience. And they will also have to work hand in hand with, um, with, with developers um, and, 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 and research teams to kind of build in the right, right user experience. Um, some uh, of the tools that are out there in the market today, um, very limited, but that's out there. Like my design team predominantly uses Figma and Sketch and we have Unreal artists and uh, Unity developers as well. So um, Blender is a tool for 3D development. So I think as designers, it's important for you to kind of upscale yourself. Um, uh, Shapes XR is also a great, great tool that uh, that's available today uh, for creating these uh, immersive experiences in, in, in a VR uh, environment. Uh, uh, Bezai is also an also a new tool that's in the market that 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 you can explore to create such uh, immersive experiences. But the the tools that we have today are still uh, it is still very limited, especially for designers. It's it's important for you to kind of move beyond Figma and like start training yourself in um, uh, other these uh, other such tools that are mentioned here as well. Um, so yeah, uh, that's. Thank you, thank you for your time. And uh, I think we're 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 in a very early stage, and um, uh, the the evolution of design system uh, around these experiences, design principles will 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 also evolve uh, as as we move. So um, so take the opportunity to kind of become aware of the changes that's happening around you. Understand different use cases, different industries that are adopting these technologies. Um, and uh, it's it's a very uh, exciting future uh, that's 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 there ahead of us. Excellent, thank you very much, Delia. It was a kind of an interesting example of some of the uh, some of the case studies I hadn't actually thought of, um, particularly around kind of modeling different airflows, which is <laughs> something I yeah. wouldn't have thought of. Um, if anybody has any questions, please do write them in. We have time for maybe one or two questions. I I would love to start with. You, you mentioned at the start that you could do different models, like so before you even construct something, you can mock it up. How intensive is that? 
Like, yeah. is, it, yeah. is it a simple type of thing or is this quite a complex and involved effort? It's not. 3D modeling is very complex and very time consuming. Uh, and uh, and because we place in these 3D assets, it's, it's definitely going to be time consuming. But again, the skill sets that is required for it is like you need an architect, architect you need uh, you need uh, 3D artists to kind of build this. But what is also coming up now is with Gen, Gen AI, generative AI, you can actually do, you don't have to create like a complete model of the building, but at least a structural model of the building would be enough for you to like even test a lot of these parameters that I'm talking about. So Gen AI can create these models at a very, very faster pace uh compared to you know a 3d artist actually doing it manually and uh and there are tools and even we use that for uh you know so it's it we even we use that for kind of uh simulating uh different scenarios so that uh, the users can take better decisions yeah and, and that kind of just by creating the models it can figure out things like how fluid like as in airflow um would work or is it something that you have to add on top no, it's something that you have to add on top. This the solution needs to have that. So, how does it simulate, uh, for example, sunlight? So, where does the building face? Uh, whether so, because you're placing it on the map, whether it's facing on the east side, west side, uh, whether if there are two towers, whether one tower is hiding the other tower, what is the height of the so it kind of it kind of takes into account different parameters to 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 like come up with. Uh, what would be an ideal model um, and also how many units you have uh, per within a building. So whether I can have six units in a floor or maybe eight units in a floor with like lesser square feet. So how can what what are the different uh, models that I can come up with to kind of take a better uh, like uh, model on financial yield? So, yeah, there are like multiple things that go on top of it as well. Uh, but the modeling would be like the beginning of, of it.